function of the uh, natural log of the odds of death versus not death, right? Basically, it's saying the combination of these predictors uh, provides a statistical improvement in our model, right? Uh, so the question being, does the addition of impact, depravity, delivery uh, mode contribute to the prediction? Yeah, it does. It looks like the combination of all these uh, variables together uh, produces a, a statistically significant reduction in the model log likelihood uh, when we include these predictors in. Right? So it's saying we're doing better than just guessing at chance, right? Because if this isn't, basically I've got a bunch of predictors that aren't sort of correlated or sort of predicting anything. They're all useless, right? And so I might as well just predict the mode a lot response, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and again, if we go down and we take a look, so here's our, our negative two log likelihood for our full model, right? Uh, and then we've got our pseudo R squared statistics. We won't care about those too much. Um, but then we've got our classification table. What do we see? What's different about our classification table relative to uh, the last one we took a look at? Cells are different. Cells are different. Why is that? We have predictors. Yeah, we have predictors. And so we're just, yeah, we're, so we're not just uh, predicting that everybody gets the death sentence, right? Uh, what we've done, we actually starting to populate these cells, right? Based on our model, we're predicting. And again, if you take a look here at the cutoff value, right? So if someone's Predicted probability is above 0.5, then they say life. If it's below 0.5, or, or excuse me, above 0.5, we say death. If it's below 0.5, we say life, right? Um, but what we've done is we've gone uh, from correctly predicting, what, 57% or 58%, uh, we're up to 64. Not a huge jump, but we're certainly better, and sort of our overall model coefficient say, uh, that we're doing better than just sort of guessing the, the, the mobile response, right? So again, uh, if we're going down through and taking a look at this, uh, we've got our true negatives, we've got our true positives, right? We've got our false positives. Uh, yep, false positives, uh, false negatives here. And we can go through and we can calculate sensitivity, specificity, uh, all of that within this model, right? Uh, so if you actually go through your sensitivities, pretty good. Uh, we're pretty good at picking up uh, death sentence criteria. But that's not terribly shocking given that that's sort of the more common response in this set, right? So our sensitivity is 0.76 uh, versus our specificity is 0.48, right? We're catching about half of the life sentences, right, and missing on the other half. Uh, again, positive predictive value is pretty good, 0.67 in this, right, the positive predictive value being our confidence that our criterion is actually the criterion. So if we're predicting someone's gonna get the death penalty, we're about like two thirds sure that that's probably the case. Our negative predictive uh, power is less, but it's still not too bad, it's about 0.6, right? So if I predict that someone's gonna be uh, a life sentence, how positive am I? Uh, better than chance, right? Um, depending on what you're looking for there. And so that's uh, what's going on in our classification table. All right, uh, and then finally, we've got our variables in the equation. This is where we're going through, we're actually looking at our individual coefficients here, okay? So we've got um, our constant. What's our, what's, our, what's our constant here, Judah? How do we interpret constant? So again, remember, what does it mean when all of our other variables are zero, right? So we're talking about uh, average uh, number of impact statements, um, average depravity, and this actually gets into some collinearity issues because zero means that there's no impact statement, which conflicts with the fact that average impact statement, right? So here your intercept doesn't actually have a real meaning because it doesn't map onto anything, right? Because we've got number of impact statements and then delivery of impact uh, with uh, delivery or reference group being zero, and if we had zero, then we can't be have an average number of impact statements. So conceptually, it doesn't make a lot of sense given these data. But uh, if we were to say it, we would say for people who didn't give an impact statement uh, at average levels of depravity and average levels of 
so the number of VIS, right? Uh, what we would say is that uh, the likelihood of receiving death is uh, uh, point, uh, point 0.8 times that of uh, not death, right? And so for a baseline person, are they more likely to receive death or not death? Or excuse me, whoops, I was looking at the wrong one. There I was reading my coefficient, not my exponentiated, okay? Excuse me. Uh, the likelihood of receiving death at average levels of depravity uh, with average levels of EIS for people without a EIS, so ignore that thing. We would be saying that the odds of death are uh, about 2.3 times that of life. Right? So we're about uh, 130 times more likely to receive uh, a death penalty, uh, a death sentence, uh, holding everything else constant in the mean uh, than we were would be to receive life. Okay. So again, this makes some sense. All other things held constant, more likely to receive death penalty than not death penalty given these data. That's not implying, in, in this case, it's not implying that most people get the death penalty. Right? Exactly. It's just implying that our data shows that because ours. That's the representative. That's, that's the representatives in this that we have, right? And so we're looking at this, and it's not saying anything about the population, right? It's just saying within these data. So if we hold everything else constant at the mean, uh, people are uh, uh, about 130 percent more likely to have a death sentence than than not uh, within these data. Right. But again, wanting you to go through and make making sure uh, people are taking a look at that constant and think about what is this, what does it mean, sort of grappling with some of these things. Okay, um, so we go through uh, and take a look here. Uh, so we've got our depravity score. Let's hold off on interpreting that. Uh, what's more interesting here, at least from sort of an interpretive standpoint, and think about uh, uniquenesses of logistic regression. Uh, you'll see that we've got uh, our BIS delivery. We have a, a statistical test here, and then we have VIS delivery one, two, and three. What is that telling us, Candace? Which one? The statistical test for the VIS For VIS delivery, delivery and then we've got uh, VIS delivery one, VIS delivery two, VIS delivery three. Uh, overall, that's saying that overall there's something in VIS delivery that's statistically significant. Exactly. This is our omnibus test, right? We don't have a... Uh, uh, an odds ratio for this, it's just an omnibus test, like does the inclusion of uh, VIS add anything to the model? Yeah, it looks like it does, right? Mm -hmm. This is a reliable predictor. What about one, two, and three? What is this telling us? How well, whether the uh, private question Q&A and open are Versus none. Versus none. So these, these are your <coughs> contrasts, these are your indicator variables, right? And for your indicator variables, you do have a, an odds ratio here, right? Uh, and so we get uh, a statistically reliable effect for VIS delivery one, which corresponds to private versus none. Uh, nothing that looks like Q&A versus none, uh, but it does something marginal maybe uh, going on for uh, open versus none, right? Mm -hmm. So we could make a decision to go through and, and interpret that. But uh, what we're looking at here is we see, okay, coefficient there, but that's the, the log likelihood of sort of our outcome. We're not interested in that. Um, but we go down through and we take a look here and we see our exponentiated coefficient is 0.261, right? And so what we would say uh, is that holding all of the variables, uh, or controlling for all of the variables here, uh, the odds of uh, death are 0.26 times as likely as that of life if BIS is presented in private versus not at all. Okay. And again, my odds ratio is 0.26. So am I talking about an increase in the odds of death or a decrease in the odds of death? Decrease. A decrease in the odds of death, right? But I don't have to say if I'm interpreting this way, I don't have to say increase, decrease, because if I'm saying that the, uh, the odds of death are 0.26 times uh, as likely uh, is that of life, I'm already indicating in that a reduction in my odds, right? Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to switch this around, I could take one minus uh, 0.261, uh, and I could switch that around. I could say uh, the odds of death uh, uh, decreased by 74% for individuals 
uh, presenting the BIS in private versus not at all, right? So again, wanting to think about this and sort of put together some language that makes sense to you that communicates this clearly, because there's some different ways that you can play around in how you want to present this. Right? So you can use, you don't have to do anything when you're discussing the exponented, ex, more off. Um, exponentiated. Exponentiated. Um, the, uh, you could just say 0.261, you yep. don't have, you don't, okay. Yeah. Is it's 0.26, uh, is it say about 0.25 times uh, the likelihood of, of not death, right? Which suggests, uh, which indicates that it's, it's a reduction in the odds of, of death versus not death, right? So uh, apparently, and I said so this is probably opposite of what people had intended, but at least these data are saying that if we present a BIS statement in private versus not at all, it actually decreases the likelihood that someone's going to get the death penalty versus not. So I don't know what presenting this in private means, but so it looks like it actually reduces the likelihood that someone ends up uh, getting a death sentence by about 75 percent, right? Um, I guess it would be a if you can. Um, well, it's with the emotional content because it re pre wrote it. Okay. So then when they present it in court, it tends to be a little bit less emotional than just on the spot saying how the death affected. Right. Sorry. So if anything, that, that works backwards again, so if you're trying to get people fried up, right? <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> 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 so, do you interpret it as like for every unit increase in private? Okay. Ooh, now, do we, we we could we could, but does that make a do? But do we need really. to? No, no, right? Because we're we're it's a, it's a a one unit increase means from from going from private to or excuse me going from not at all to private. Right. Is one unit one unit increase, but it, that does it. Sort of dumb to talk about it that way, right? So sort of like, yeah. so sort of like a one-unit increase in gender. Like, well, if we, <laughs> I mean, right. let's just say so what it is, right? <laughs> so relative to males, right? So the women are X percent more likely to have this happen. The odds are this percent greater, this okay. much greater, right? And so in this case, we would say the odds of death uh, are 0.26 times as likely uh, as that of life uh, if BIS was presented in private versus not at all, right? Okay. You're just making that uh, gotcha. distinction there, right? Okay, uh, and so then we can go through and want to take a look. So we've got a marginal effect uh, for uh, the lip for our third indicator variable. Why might we not want to give up on that guy quite yet? Because we have an outlier? Well, that too, right? <laughs> because of the, uh, so this is based off the, the walled statistic? The walled statistic, right? And so. You know, this gets a little bit tricky, um, as in how you test a model without that, because you kind of need that in there. Um, but again, this is one of these situations, if there's a continuous variable, this would be the case where you might want to go through and actually test uh, a difference, and I'm not sure with this indicator variable how you would do that effectively. But mm -hmm. if this was a continuous predictor, would want to say, well, Let's go through and do a, a, a log likelihood difference test to see if this is actually uh, a non-effect or something that we could say, I was going to say, doesn't reach statistical reliability. Okay. All right. Uh, other thing, too, if we're going through and taking a look here, uh, we see that we've got an effect of depravity, right? So the more depraved these crimes are, are rated, it looks like that has an impact on whether or not you're getting uh, life or death. Right, uh, and if we go through and we take a look at our coefficient here, our walled statistic, we see that this is statistically reliable, 0 0.009, so we've got a p-value that would makes us all happy, right? But if we take a look at our exponentiated component, uh, uh, our exponentiated coefficient looks pretty minimal, right? So we've got a uh, a 1.1. Uh, our odds ratio is 1.11, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, suggesting that a one point increase in depravity score increases the odds of death by a factor of about 1.1, right? Uh, or we could say uh, that a one point increase is associated with uh, an 11 percent, uh, a one point increase uh, in depravity associated with an 11 point increase, or 11 percent increase in the odds of death, which seems pretty minimal, right? But it's really, uh, but we, it's clearly uh, reliable here. Someone tell me what's going on with this. Well, isn't depravity on a hundred point scale? Uh, yeah, it's a hundred point scale, right? So one unit 
is one unit yeah. is incrementally small, right? Yeah. And so if we go down through, if we want to say, so a one point uh, increase associated with the uh, uh, eleven or one point increase associated with eleven percent increase in the odds of death, or a one point increase associated with an increased uh, uh, or increase the odds of death by a factor of one point one. Um, Two-point increase uh, associated with a 23% uh, percent increase in the odds of death versus not death, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to be one point one one to the second. Mm -hmm. Maybe something about point <coughs> three, right? Uh, if I want to talk about a five-point increase, right? That's 1.11 to the fifth, corresponding to about a 69% increase mm -hmm. in the odds of death versus not death. Right. And if we go back to, and we want to take a look at our standard deviation, standard deviation or depravity about nine, right? What is that? Yeah. I guess it'd, be, it'd probably be somewhere around 11, or 111 percent, but. Uh, so 1.11 to the ninth is what? Um, 2.56. So yeah, a 256 percent. 250 percent increase in the odds of death versus not death for across a five point uh, increase in that, right? So, and so, so one standard deviation increase in depravity would increase the likelihood of the death oh. sentence by 256 so percent. No, no, no. So okay, whoops. So is uh, 1.11 to the ninth 2.56? Yeah. Okay. So corresponding to 156. Oh, yeah. Yeah, percent, oh right? that's yeah. right. That's right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we would see a five point increase would correspond to a 2.56 uh, 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 times uh, the odds of the odds of death would increase uh, by uh, 2.56 uh, for a five unit increase in my outcome, right? So you're just going through and looking at this in, in terms of, of an exponentiating function, or excuse me, as a, as a power function instead of, it's a multiplicative thing, okay? Um, and so we would say uh, the odds of death uh, versus the odds of a uh, death sentence, and we can just say, you know what the alternative is, right? The odds of receiving that sentence are uh, 2.56 times that uh, of not death, uh, given a five unit increase in this depravity score. Uh, Nine unit increase in this depravity score. Right? Alternatively, we could say uh, we see 156 percent increase in the odds of death uh, versus life in prison, given a five uh, unit increase in this depravity score. So, just looking at these things as a power function, and sort of these things can start to wrap up, rack up quite quickly here. Can you interpret it as just saying a one standard deviation? Yep, we could do okay. that too. Standard deviation just increase. Feeling uh, like that would be more meaningful. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. And so, excellent, excellent. So, then one thing about how do I communicate this? Because this is sort of the big task, right? You run your research and you say, how do I communicate this to people in a way that's meaningful, right? Uh, but the one thing to remember is so with our categorical variables, that's easy, right? We say in this group versus that group, right? Uh, uh, corresponds to uh, uh, the odds of this versus that are X amount times that for this group versus that group. But when we're looking at our, our continuous variables, because uh, our, our, in our model, it's always going to be a one unit change unless we go through and start changing around in the scaling of our variable, mm -hmm. right? Um, but here, we do uh, standard deviation unit change in depravity is going to correspond to. Uh, 156 percent increase in the likelihood of, of uh, a death penalty conviction. Questions about any of this? Okay. Uh, one last thing that we'll do here, just to show you kind of what this looks like. 
All right, Josh, I'm sorry, I don't get it. Um, 